If you're starting and growing a brand, chances are you're looking into creating a lookbook for your marketing materials or perhaps to show off your new designs. But perhaps you're wondering, is this something that you even need? Is this really necessary? So in today's video, we're going to be diving into some points and some things that you may never have heard of. So if you're a new visitor to this channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn on those post notification bells to be alerted of future video drops because on this channel, our mission is to build brands that impact the world from the ground up. And in today's video, we're joined by the one and only Mike, who's going to be diving into these details. So let's jump right into it. Hey, what's up? I'm Mike Leisure. I'm an artist and I'm an art director. You might recognize me from the Why Brands Fail video and other ones where we made music videos and talked about margin stuff. But today, we're going to be talking about lookbooks. You may have heard the term, you may not know what it is. And we're going to answer the question. And also, do you need one? What is it? Why? Where does this come from? I don't know. So what is a lookbook? Historically, fashion brands would create these to help explain the story. They would use it to uh, expand on what the collection is. And I think that that was something that was done in large at the time. But as we've moved, they've gone from print to digital. And I think that's where the lines are blurred. Now we're asking, what does the lookbook mean in the digital age? As we've said, lookbooks essentially add to the story, right? You can pick environments and models and things that tell more of a story. Lookbooks can help add dimension to your collection by changing the environment, the colors, the textures, the design of it all that really can accentuate what you've done within the actual physical clothing themselves. I think at the end of the day, it's about using a lookbook to inspire your customers, inspire them on how to wear them, inspire them on where the clothes go after you take them home. So here comes the big question. You're learning about what it is. You might be hearing it from you know, somebody who's in an industry or somebody else who has a small brand, and they're like, yo, you need a lookbook, or have you done a lookbook? Maybe you've seen an article that says why your brand needs a lookbook. I, I think the, the thing that we're really looking at here is how big your brand is and how big your collections are for you to even have a lookbook. Okay, so let's say you wanna do one anyway. How do we make the most out of it? Whether you need it or you don't need it, um, I think what you need to do in order to make one successful is plan well. And I say that for everything, you've seen it in the other videos, I'm all about planning and organizing. You have to think ahead. If you're not planning on what the lighting is going to look like or where you're going to be shooting it, how many looks you have, who's styling it, what photographer you're going to use and why, these things will start to fall through. Unless you just so happen to be lucky and you get all the best stuff just out of nowhere, but chances are probably not. These things take a lot of effort and they take a lot of time. From my perspective as an art director, I think one of the biggest things where people fall short on these lookbooks is styling. I think a lot of people just think, I have some sweats, I have some shirts, I'm just gonna put that in an outfit and then put these into photos and then I'll just throw them up. I think that the lack of styling doesn't actually inspire people. I think that so many brands exist today that if you just saw someone in a full sweatsuit of whatever you created, it's just another person selling like a sweatsuit like little thing, you know what I mean? It's a little combo, same exact colors. It's, it's not inspiring, so it's like how do you then look deeper into that and make that a little more elevated. In the past, when I've done different lookbooks, I'm gonna tell you right now, we had multiple stylists. Uh, we had different people styling for different types of looks. We had different people come in specifically for accessories. And I think that these things are so important because it's really down to the details. If you get into this situation where you're trying to create, every single detail is important down to the rings, the watch, the chain, not wearing a chain, who is that type of person? What shoes are they wearing? Are they dirty, are they clean? It doesn't have to be so pristine and brand new, but it really depends on the collection itself. So these are things that you definitely need to pay attention to when you're styling and you're putting it all together. So as I was saying with the accessories, this is the collection we did for 54 and we called it the Wave. And when we were doing this, it was like the hat is important, the belt. And then if you notice on these other ones that the belt is folded in a specific way. Like 
that's a specific detail that says who's going to wear this and why. Because the guy who wears his belt like this is not going to be like the other guy. Or even the person who wears this chain and this shirt is like completely different. And these are the ways that we can inspire people to wear this clothes. Maybe you see yourself as that guy. They're all so different. So this collection in particular and this lookbook could be fitting for a multitude of people as opposed to something where it's styled specifically for one type of guy or person. The other thing that I am so keen on and I really want people to understand is that the models do matter. If you've had the opportunity to shoot with or be on set for when there's a real model and a real photographer, you'll see it's night and day from shooting with your friend. Unless your friend so happens to be a model or they know what they're doing or they're an aspiring model. Um, but you'll, you'll see, it's like they are very professional. That's, they literally get paid to do that. So they come in, they know how to pose, they know how to work the camera, they know how to work literally the clothes themselves because they'll put it on and they understand like already, oh, okay, dope, this has a pocket here, I'm gonna stand this way. Whereas your friend might do this and it's like, now I don't know there's pockets on the vest. There's all these little things that people don't understand, all the minute details that you should be paying attention to. So picking a good model and picking somebody who understands what they're doing is going to make this look so much better. So this is kind of the tricky part though. As we talk about like if you need it or not, I think getting booking a real model is gonna be fairly expensive. So if it makes sense for you, go ahead and do that. If you can't, then you have to work with what you have. But I mean, if you're gonna start trying to look for models, you can look for uh, agencies within your area and then you can send out emails, go ahead and ask them what they have available, ask for uh, a catalog and then look through, see who, see who fits your look and who fits the clothing, who you imagine to be wearing this. Um, then you're gonna get your quotes and then you're gonna have to pay your fees and do your thing. Do remember, if you do book a professional model, make sure you are professional. Or if the model shows up and you're taking a long time to set up and they're sitting there for three hours before they start shooting, you don't have any food or water for them, that's gonna get back to the agency and you're definitely not getting another model anytime soon. Especially from that agency, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so as I talked about before, planning is so important. You really need to look ahead of time and see how many looks you're planning because if you plan on shooting five looks, that's cool. If you're planning on shooting 10 or 12 looks, make sure you're prepared. Set those things up ahead of time, like iron them out if you don't have a steamer, steam them, lint roll, everything, because you can't be on set trying to figure these things out and trying to do it because if you're booking models, you're booking photographers, you wanna make the best of that time. And then the other thing is that if you have props, if you have furniture on set, if you wanna be shooting in a studio, pick your backdrops, pick your furniture, everything ahead of time, make sure it's delivered or you're taking it there, have one of your PAs bring everything, like you need to have this stuff tightened up, get your production schedule on, cause you wanna show up ready to go and you wanna knock this out to the best quality that you could do. Um, and if you're, you're worried about these little things while you're on set, it's definitely gonna throw off your creativity. So this collection is called uh, The Common Thread, another one we did for 5.4. And you know, location is like super important. So when we shot here, it was great for us because it was cheaper and it was one location, but it, just the simplicity of it all allowed us to be creative and showcase the clothes. And sometimes you want a really simple background, sometimes you want it to be more in the environment. For this one, we chose to be in the studio and have it be very clean. And then as I was saying here, there's chairs and things like that. That's stuff that we had to bring in ourselves, but we had to make sure that we had it in on time and we had to pick out which models sit down, which looks are sitting, which looks are standing. And you have to think about that as well because it's like if you have pants or a jacket that wants to show certain details, you can't really have them sitting or you need them standing and you have to think about these things. So this one is from our 5.4 Winter 16 collection. And I think this one was really cool because we were actually able to take you into the uh, city and show you everything that was like there. It really puts the person into the environment and that inspires them to uh, see themselves in this kind of city life and how that person's living. Um, I think this one was also really cool because we were able to design it in such a beautiful way and have little pieces about the clothing and about the city. So. It's a lot of fun ways to be able to work with and create lookbooks. All right, so how much does it cost to create a lookbook? And this is a crazy question because it can literally cost you zero dollars and it can cost you as much as you want it to be. It could be a million, it could be five million, it could be 500,000, it could be 200,000, it could be 6,000. It all really depends on how crazy you want to get. Some companies are throwing out 
ridiculous amounts of money because it makes sense for them, because they're known for their lookbooks, because they're going to do the next craziest thing. They're expected to do that. Some companies are hitting the same mark of where they need to be, and they don't need to outdo themselves every time. It's just consistent, good looks and good clothing. And then there's the companies that are starting out and you're trying to hit a certain mark. So it, it all depends because the moment you start booking models, that's a cost. Booking photographers is a cost. Booking locations is a cost. And you, as you know, all of these are going to change. You've probably been on peer space or been somewhere looking for a studio. Sometimes the hourly is 25, sometimes it's 60. And I think these are things you need to assess ahead of time and then look into because that'll help you determine the cost, write them all down, Excel sheet them out, and then you can really gauge how this is going to hit you. And then does it make sense for you to create if you're only going to make X amount of money from the collection you've made and those like that many pieces or that quantity that you've created. So keep that in mind. It's a matter of your resources, who you can tap, your location really, uh, like literally where you live geographically, sometimes have more resources and sometimes you don't. And then if you need to, you might have to fly out to be where you need to be to do that or ship your clothes to someone who can create that vision for you. These are things you're going to have to assess. So how much does it cost? Open-ended question. Can't really tell you. <laughs> all right. So when it comes to designing lookbooks and putting it all together, this is actually a very fun part if you did your work. If you put in the time to prepare and you know exactly what your assets are going to be like coming in, the design part is going to be so fun because low-key, you should have already planned for how you were going to design it. Picking that aesthetic, uh, as I say, I always like to find things that accentuate what the clothing is going to be. So if, if there's a lot of fun textures, like uh, I'm working with some corduroy or something like that, I might take a photo of someone wearing the pants and then overlay them on top of corduroy. Because as I'm looking through the lookbook, I can see the photos of the person, and then I can also really get this in-depth look at the texture, which inspires me, of like kind of gives me like that, that neuro-like feeling of like, I can feel that almost just by looking at it. Then maybe you're, you're moving into something where the graphic tee has really cool lines and it's like, how do we get that into, like work that into the photo shoot? Maybe we're shooting these cool lines in a really minimal space that has like nice shadows. Then you work that into something with uh, some really clean architecture in the back. There's so many fun ways to uh, engage with people visually and try to get them to, to see more in their mind and like connect with the clothing. So many ways to design, you can find a lot of good inspiration on Pinterest. You can even check Google. There's a lot of good articles out there uh, and, and blogs that you can check out. And I think a lot of the time too, looking through magazines and understanding how people lay it out and then transferring those same ideas to your lookbook. Key things to note though when you're designing that'll make things interesting for you is again, I've mentioned texture, uh, patterns, um, prints, lines, colors. The background could be white. It could be the same color as the shirt. You can use those things to really like enhance how something looks. And I actually love that about it because it's like so open, but also um, kind of tightens up on and focuses on the actual vision that you have. So this is another one. And you'll notice it was a lot from 5.4. I did a lot there. It was really fun. And they allowed me to be creative. Uh, this one is 5.4 Desert Oasis. And each one of them comes with the lookbook video, which was really fun to do. Um, here, this entire collection was about uh, something that inspired people for like festival. So I wanted this desert oasis vibe, and I had these monochromatic elements in the back, like the cactus. And then the story that I was telling here was actually from sunrise to sunset. So you'll see the yellows are moving here. And then as we go into it, this is daytime. We're, at, we're actually in the pool. But if you look at the textures in the back, you can actually see this water from the pool. And then if you look, we actually set this pool chair that's standing up. There's a lot of weird things that you can do. It was fun. It added to the, the like composition of it all. And so then once we're done with the pool and you've had your pool day, we go to the sunset. And I picked this color because it was just like this beautiful red and it allows me to think of like just that like fiery sunset you know what i mean and if you look to the looks actually start to transfer into nighttime uh during the day it might be or morning time might be a little colder but then as you move it's going to be hotter and then depending where you're at you're going to want to maybe bring a jacket and then later as you get into the night you can wear it and this one was just really fun because we got to play with so many colors and play with so many textures. And I had a lot of fun working with the, uh, the props. Okay, so you've seen a lot of examples that are inside and in studio. Here is kind of like a hybrid because it was, it's like an outdoor studio for the summer prelude. 
And this one, one of my favorite campaigns we've done, and we were able to link that with the lookbook. Uh, as you can see, the textures are just amazing. It's like summertime, right? But man, look at these walls, look at the shadows, everything's just so beautifully put, the lines, the, oh God. And then the reason why we picked this place is because you can tell by the clothing, I wanted to inspire this like feeling of being maybe at a resort or something, and it's like resort wear. And then you have all the water, but like the clean lines actually match up with how the clothes are designed. I think that within each brand, there's a certain market of people, right? And then within that demographic, there's only a small percentage that actually looks at these lookbooks. If you're known for that and that's what you do, people tend to look at them and they, they're looking forward to what you have coming out seasonally. If you're dropping one collection a year, if you're dropping just a few pieces, it's kind of hard to do a lookbook for that specifically. And to kind of put the resources into it, I feel like doesn't always add up to what you want it to be. This one is issue 1017, and this was really fun to work with because this particular month, we wanted to just experiment and do something that was not so glamorous. We took this plywood and decided to shoot against it, and there's like these cool graphical lines on the back, and then we played with color and desaturating some of these things, and I had a friend of mine design this and put it together, and I think he did a great job actually pulling from different colors and then mixing the backgrounds. And it's cool because like that's the way the clothing actually is, and there's like the mixture of textures and patterns and the outfits are reflected within this entire style guide. Dude, really good info, man. You always come in here bringing in the fire. But one of the big things that we have, because you know we're, we're also collaborating on some content and some launch as we start to launch the FTGU merch, mm -hmm. is should we make a lookbook for what we're doing? Man, so that's kind of like the, that's the question, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, do I need it? Um, I think that it makes sense, right? For a lot of these smaller brands, if you're gonna do it, kind of tie it to your campaign. Mm. I think for me, the campaign imagery is a lot more effective because you can actually use those photos mm -hmm. for your banners and for social media and for ads and things like that. So if you're doing that and you have those photos and you can make a lookbook from it, it makes sense. But to shoot just a lookbook by itself, I don't think it's feasible. I don't think it's worth the money unless you have that. In your terms, what is like the true essence of a lookbook? Like what would it really be for? It's, so, some people think say it's for styling, to show people how they're gonna style it, but does it have other meanings behind it or like other purposes other than just the visuals that look cool? It's for styling, it's to inspire people uh, uh, like how to wear it, how to pair it, um, what environments you should be in. Uh, sometimes it's left blank for you to really just imagine that and it doesn't force you upon a certain location or anything. But I think in my perspective, I think that it's a huge flex. Mm -hmm. Like when Louis Vuitton drops one, when Balenciaga drops a lookbook, it's like a holy shit, what are they gonna do next? Right, and I right. think that's, if you get yourself into that zone and you are able to create that kind of like buzz, it mm -hmm. makes a lot of sense for you to do it. But uh, I think for, for that, it, to me, it's a flex. Got it, so then, so then lookbooks in today's age, especially during, because you say you could repurpose it for, for Instagram, for your banners, for promotion. Mm -hmm. So a lookbook in today's age is similar to like a runway digitally, right? People are coming yeah. in there with some crazy stuff to like really stand out and, and have feed on the Hypebeast forums. Or, I know they yeah. used to have Hypebeast forums, but now it's the, <laughs> just the blogs that they pay posts for, right? <laughs> right. But yeah, I think essentially that. It's like a look how crazy we can be, right? Mm -hmm. And if your clothing's not that crazy, I don't think it makes sense to do it. It's like how, how crazy are you going to be with a graphic tee, you know what I mean? Right, right. And I think if you're in that zone, that's where you're at. If you start making some crazier clothes, run that up. Dude, that's amazing info. Where can people find you that are watching this video? Where can they go to, to learn more about what you do and perhaps get, get inspired by the content you guys are putting out? Because you guys put out some amazing content on Instagram, really, really visually educational. So like, where can they find you? Uh, you can find us at Proper Worldwide on Instagram. You can also find us Proper Worldwide on YouTube. And we're going to start posting again soon. So come on over. Check us out. Mike's been a very busy man. Like it took us a few months to coordinate this shoot. So I hope you guys really appreciated this video. We're doing some amazing work together with them and their team from the design to the marketing to like some really cool stuff that's dropping on this channel. So if you guys are watching this, make sure you guys are checking out the links in the description as we'll be linking Mike's information, their websites, Instagram, social media and we'll also be linking some of the links that we have to the launch of what we're working on. So I know you guys are gonna really appreciate that info, that insight, the content, the uh, 
a lot of cool stuff to really help you guys continue to elevate your brand, but also your life and business. So make sure if you guys are a new visitor to this channel, hit the subscribe button, hit that like button, share this video with a friend that needs to know this because there's a lot of brands out there that are interested in wondering, should they put the money and time into a lookbook? So I hope that this kind of gave you guys some clarity and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.